The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. When I first saw George Reeves as Superman, I didn't care how old he was or what kind of shape he was in. He didn't have to have a costume with molded latex muscles built into the suit. This was Superman. He could leap tall buildings at a single bound. Yes, in his comic book beginnings, Superman didn't fly. He leapt great distances. But this Superman could really fly. George Kiefer Brewer, best known as George Reeves, owned the part not only as Superman, but as the greatest Clark Kent that ever lived. His Clark Kent was super cool, with his never-wrinkled suit and his suave hat. He even made wearing glasses look cool. Unlike the comic books where Clark was portrayed as meek and mild-mannered, this Clark Kent was more like Superman in street clothes. This kept the budget down as Superman only showed up in the last act, and Clark was featured through most of the episodes. As I watched the show in reruns, I didn't realize they were shown out of order, so having two different Lois Lanes was a little confusing. I found out later that Phyllis Coates and Noel Neal both played the part of Lois Lane. Jack Larson, who played Jimmy Olsen, was the version of Jimmy that I will never forget. That innocent kid with the bow tie, always willing to follow Lois into danger for a great story or picture. It was a different time when newspapers were how most people got the news. Disguised as just another reporter, Superman had his pulse on anything that needed his attention. That included strange hauntings to evil scientists to stopping asteroids from destroying the Earth. The first two seasons of The Adventures of Superman were 52 episodes in total, and they were filmed in black and white. The remaining four seasons were filmed in color, but shown in black and white and not broadcast in color until 1965. The colorful Superman costume didn't look good in black and white, so a special costume was made for the first two seasons, which had gray, brown, and white shades. Later, when filmed in color, the familiar red, blue, and yellow costume didn't have much contrast when broadcast in black and white. In later episodes, they made the blues a little lighter color to better contrast with the reds. The first episode, which served as the pilot, was shot in July 1951 and was titled Superman and the Mole Men. It was released as a successful black and white movie in November of 1951. Production began on the TV series in the fall of 1951, but came to a halt while they searched for a national sponsor. The episodes remained unaired until September 1952, when serial giant Kellogg's decided to sponsor them as they had done with the Superman radio show. The initial pilot, Superman and the Mole Men, was later edited into two parts entitled The Unknown People, but went unaired until later added to the show's syndication package. It is sometimes referred to as the season one finale. Bob Maxwell produced the first season of The Adventures of Superman. That season had more of a film noir approach to the series and was more action-packed and violent with a lot more drama. When they decided to proceed with a second season, A year had passed, and Maxwell was now producing Lassie. Whitney Ellsworth then took over as producer, and immediately began to make the show much lighter and whimsical in tone. Ellsworth had contacted Phyllis Coates about reprising her role as Lois for the second season, but she was dealing with a sick child at the time. Coates also felt the series would not be the same, as the production values were going down, and the tone was not to her liking. Ellsworth then offered her almost five times what she'd been making for the first season, but she decided it was time for her to leave. Plus, she had already signed a deal to do a pilot for MCA. Television's first Lois Lane, played by Coates as a tough and gritty reporter, was now gone. In her place, though, was the likable, softer version of Lois, played by Noel Neal, who had played the character previously in the Columbia theatrical serials. The show was filmed like an assembly line, with the cast wearing the same outfits for each episode to save on budget. Scenes set in the same locations would be filled simultaneously, out of sequence, for editing into different episodes at a later date. This was confusing for the cast as they didn't know which episodes they were filming for. 
Using the same sets for Lois and Clark's office also saved money on construction costs. They would switch wall hangings to make the scene look a little different. The budget for the series was very low, coming in at around $15,000 an episode, so many episodes, especially towards the end, were filmed in studio with exterior shots being very limited. In the beginning, the actors were only paid $200 per episode, and finally, after threatening to stop production, they were given a $50 raise per week. Reeves himself was making up to $2,500 an episode by the end of the series, but the rest of the cast was still vastly underpaid. After two seasons, the show began filming in color, and the number of episodes was cut in half to save additional costs. Each 26-episode season would feature only 13 new episodes shot in color, with 13 reruns of the black and white episodes. The morale of the cast and crew was starting to take a hit at this point, as production costs rose and salary disputes were taking their toll. Flood lines and sloppy editing were common, as it was too expensive to light up the set for reshoots. Villains became caricatures, and violence was toned down for a younger audience. From the third season on, the show was very tongue-in-cheek, and the only gunfire was when the crook shot at Superman, and the bullets bounced off his chest. After the third season, George Reeves was feeling typecast and reportedly was ready to quit. He attempted to produce his own adventure series called Port of Entry, but the show never got the financing it needed. Producers approached actor Kirk Allen, who had already played Superman in the 1940s serial shorts, about reprising the role, but he turned them down. In the end, Reeves ended up returning to finish the series. In the final season, they attempted to bring back some of the feeling of the first two seasons with many sci-fi elements from the comics. Things like a kryptonite-powered robot in the episode The Gentle Monster, or an impregnable metal cube in the episode The Mysterious Cube. George Reeves himself directed three episodes of the series, including The Perils of Superman, The Brainy Burrow, and the final episode of the series, All That Glitters. Reeves also appeared as Superman in an episode of I Love Lucy, which aired in January 1957 in an episode appropriately titled Lucy and Superman. The flying effects on Superman were state-of-the-art for the day. There were no computers or CGI available. The flying scenes were shot in three phases, the takeoff, the flying, and the landing. Early into production, cable and wires were used to show Superman's takeoff, but while filming Superman and the Mole Man, the wires snapped and Reeves fell to the floor. Although Reeves did most of his own stunts, he refused to do the wire takeoffs again. Stunt men were then used whenever they wanted to use that setup. By the end of season one, the cables and wires were gone and replaced by a springboard. Reeves, who was very athletic, would then run into the camera frame and jump onto the springboard, launching himself onto padding out of frame of the shot. Sometimes it would even launch him over the camera to make it look like he was taking off. The flying scenes were next. They consisted of a few shots that were used repeatedly throughout the series. Typically, Reeves would stretch out on a device that form-fit his torso and legs under his costume. It had a counterweight on the other side so they could make it look like he was banking and turning. For landing, Reeves would either jump off a ladder or hold on to a horizontal bar off camera and swing into the frame. This Superman also had powers that the one in the comic books never had. He could separate his molecules to walk through walls as he does in the mysterious cube. And he was able to split into two beings, like in Divide and Conquer. Two more seasons of episodes were being planned when the death of Perry White actor John Hamilton in October 1958 caused the producers to look for a replacement. Pierre Watkin was hired to play Perry White's brother, but star George Reeves' sudden death in June 1959 from an apparent suicide was the end of the series. As Superman, George Reeves would let bullets bounce off of his chest. Reeves the man, however, was not so invulnerable. On June 16, 1959, George Reeves and Superman for many young children 
was dead at the age of 45 from a gunshot wound to the head. Much has been written about the death of George Reeves, so I won't go into any conspiracy theories here. Producers had wanted to continue with Jack Larson starring as Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen in a new series. It would have used stock footage of George Reeves and used a stunt double film from behind. The idea of using Reeves' stock footage to continue the show seemed in bad taste, and luckily, Jack Larson thought so too and rejected the idea. Because much of the show was shot in color, a rarity for its day, The Adventures of Superman was a huge trendsetter and became one of the most frequently rerun shows from that decade. It truly paved the way for all syndicated shows that followed and deserves a revered spot in all of television history. After six seasons and 104 episodes, The Adventures of Superman, like its star George Reeves, was finally laid to rest. But the shows themselves will live on forever in our hearts and minds with Reeves standing tall as the greatest hero of all time, Superman. I hope you enjoyed this video. Join us again next time for more classic TV and movie trivia, reviews, and retrospectives on Rerun Zone. Goodbye for now. Life's a never-ending battle for truth, justice, and the American way.